Ah, yeah. Rod Fleming here. It's kind of grey in France today. It's a bit boring, really. So I'm going to do a video for you instead. I want to talk a little bit about Blanchard, Ray Blanchard's typology of transsexualism, which divides male to feminine transsexuals into two groups, homosexual transsexuals and autogynophiles. Sometimes called autogynophilic transsexuals or transgenders. I've done a lot on the, the difference between these two types. So please watch the other videos or go to my site, roadfleming.com and look at the links page and you'll find loads and loads of science there. there plus there's loads of articles. However, I want to talk about the situation specifically in Asia because it confuses a lot of people. Um, and this is a value in a general sense of interest, people who are interested in this subject. But also, if you're going to go to Asia and you want to meet some women, trans women, then you need to know this. Dr. Sam Winter of the University of Hong Kong has said several times that he finds it very surprising that people tend not to research on transsexualism in that part of the world where it is most obvious. And it's a very good question. <laughs> Dr. Winter has done some very interesting research. Again, there's links on my site. On my site. Um, in Asia, Southeast Asia, you'll see trans women everywhere. Absolutely everywhere every bar, every street corner, everywhere. They're all over the place. And they're very easy to meet. But they do fall into exactly the same two subtypes that you see in the West. The difference is, as a Westerner, you're not used to the differences between them. And so it's very easy to conflate them. A lot of Westerners going to somewhere like Walking Street or Nana Plaza, Places like Angelis or Burgos Street in Manila, uh, Sihanoukville, you know, there's loads of places in Southeast Asia where you'll see a lot, a concentration, like even more than normal, of uh, trans women. Remember, these transsexuals, born male, appear to be women. And you'll see these tall, strikingly glamorous, elegant creatures with, often with enhanced breasts, enhanced hips, um, quite often with facial surgeries, usually wearing rather a lot of makeup, very, you know, shall we say provocative, not to say tarty clothes. If they're prostitutes, then they will definitely be wearing tarty clothes. But even, you know, a, a, a regular girl who's not a prostitute, she'll probably be wearing quite revealing clothes if she's TS. She'll be wearing very short shorts and a, a tight top, you know, that sort of thing. She'll be showing it off. She'll be flaunting it. And you'll see these tall, elegant, sexy, incredibly sexy, hyper-feminine, you know, the, lots of gestures and flicking the hair and, you know, sticking the hips out and all the rest, hyper-feminine girls all over the place. And you'll think, as I did for a long time, you'll think, oh, that's, that's what they're like here. And there's only one type. They all look the same. You know, they're all roughly the same. Tall, slender usually, quite big feet, fine boned otherwise, and often very, very beautiful. And I mean extremely beautiful. The Southeast Asian people are beautiful people, you know. They're not really masculine in the way that Westerners are. And then one day, once your eye gets a little bit attuned, you'll suddenly realise that one of the girls that you see hanging about with a group of these tall, elegant ladyboys isn't a girl. And you go, What? And you see this short person, maybe five one, five two, five three, very slender and petite, tiny little bones, incredibly pretty, astonishingly girly face, and you will have thought she's a girl. And then you'll suddenly realise, wait a minute, she doesn't look like a girl. She's she's too slender. She's too elegant. Maybe she doesn't have boobs. You know. Wait, what, what's going on here? That's an HSDS. That's the difference, right? You're looking at a group of AGPs, big, tall, glamorous trans women, and in the midst of them there's an HSDS, who's small, petite, pretty, neotenous, and cute. And that's the difference. Visually, that's the difference. And at the middle, you know, every, this is biology, right? These, these differences are innate. Don't believe that blank slate stuff. It's complete shit. 
it's quite obvious that there are innate differences between men and women, for example. Women tend to be smaller, to start with. But there are also differences between AGPs and HSTS physically, right? These are physical trait characteristics that are different. HSTS tend to be smaller, lighter, more neoterous, and all the rest of it. However, both of these types, AGP and HSTS, they exist on a scale, so you get really big, tall AGPs. Now, I'm, I know AGPs who are six foot two, and total bruisers. I mean, they're really nice people. <laughs> One of my friends, is, uh, he, she makes me laugh all the time because she makes no attempt to, to hide what she is, you know, and she's huge. <laughs> <laughs> just enormous. <laughs> um, and it's all good fun, you know. Um, and then you'll get the smaller AGPs who are maybe 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, oh, on the other hand, on the HSTS side, I mean, you'll meet the HSTS who are five foot tall, you know, or less. I mean, I know girls who are 4'10", less. And actually, you know, sometimes they'll tell you their height and you'll go, oh, no, no, you mean, you mean, you mean, Five foot eight, don't you? Not four foot eight. She says, "No, I'm four foot eight. <laughs> you meet this girl, and you're in stack heels. She's this high. <laughs> what? Tiny, tiny, tiny little person. So that's an extreme of the HSTS scale. But you'll get HSTS who are five four, five five. But similar proportions. You know, they're very delicate and light. Often quite curvy people. So in the middle, right between the short, light." AGPs and the tall, somewhat heavier HSTS, there's an area where it's actually quite difficult to tell. And you really will only tell once you get to know them and you talk to them and you start to find out a little bit about their history and, and then it will be obvious. It's obvious from their reactions. Other real giveaways for the difference, you know, other than the fact that almost of, of this size difference. And by the way, I would say that at the extreme end, that is under five foot two, you're looking at an HSTS. Over five foot nine, you're looking at an AGP. And there will be no real crossover in that kind of range. There will be a crossover maybe in the sort of five, six to five, maybe five, four to five, nine height bracket that you'll find there's um, examples of both. But at the extremes, no, no, they're quite well separated. AGPs are the tall ones, HSTS are the short ones. One of the other clues that you can use, there are others, to distinguish between AGPs and HSTS. And this one is often used as one of those, oh, you can tell it's not a real girl by this one, um, is the voice. AGPs always, nearly always, have either masculine voices, you know, they just use their boy voice, or they have this thing that they call a feminine voice, and it's not very impressive, let's see. Um, a kind of strange sing-songy thing that sounds like a guy putting on a girl's voice. When you talk to an HSTS, she sounds like a girl. Her voice might sound a little bit husky and breathy, but she just sounds like a girl. And you won't go, oh, that's a guy. You just won't. Um, other things, she might have large feet. That seems to be something that goes right across the board of uh, transsexuals, transgenders in Asia, at least. Uh, think it's the same everywhere. They tend to have quite large feet, you know, they don't look like they're going to blow over in a wind or anything like that, you know. Um, Adam's apples, don't believe that bullshit. I know plenty of girls who've got absolutely no Adam's apple. The TS girl, that's, that is. You can't tell. You look at them, and particularly HSTS. You know, they have the feminine voice and they have no prominent epiglottis at all. It's just, you can't see it. Um, the two are all almost certainly related, you know, that the, the, the naturally high-pitched voice comes from the fact that they have a smaller voice box. Um, and again, that's going to be a trait characteristic, that's going to be physiological, that's that's not something you can change. Um, what else? Gestures. HSTS will be naturally feminine, you know? It's not an act. They're not putting it on. That's how they are. They're girly. AGPs, it will be an act. You know, um, and this is important because I'm presuming that you're a guy who's, if you're watching this, you know, you're actually thinking about maybe going to Asia, meeting some trans women, which I can assure you will be very enjoyable, very rewarding. You'll learn about something new um, and you might meet someone who really is just your partner and great for you and 
it just works. And that's definitely possible. I know quite a few guys who have settled with trans women in Asia and they're very happy. They make great couples and they're really, they're good together, you know. But it's a, there is a value in knowing the, the difference between the two types of trans women that you'll meet in Asia for two reasons. The first is that there are actually two different types of men who are attracted to trans women. What about that? <laughs> and I'm going to do another whole program about that, so we're not going to go into it just now. But in subjective terms, there are a number of differences between HSDS and AGP trans women in Asia. Um, HST, the, they really feel sexual desire for you, for their partners. It's very passionate. It's visceral. They have very strong libidos. They will want a lot of sex and it will be good sex. You know, and it'll be really you know, physical, powerful stuff. You know, it won't be... Mm, you won't think that she's counting ceiling tiles or anything stupid like that. I mean, you know, you know that she's into this. You know, she's up for it and she's really enjoying it. And AGP, there's always a certain sense of distance. It's like an abstract. It's like an abstract form of sex. It's almost as if the person that you're having sex with is somewhere else. You know, there are bodies there, but she's not actually with you. And, you know, you can actually get this with natal women if they're not enjoying sex and they don't want sex or they just don't like you very much, but they're still doing it, you know. Um, and you get that kind of sensation with AGPs a lot that, you know, there's something just, there's a disconnect. There's, a, there's a, some kind of weird disconnect. And the reason for that is, of course, that an autogynophile isn't really into male bodies. She's in love with the idea of herself as a woman, so she wants to have sex as a woman. That's not quite the same thing as being a feeling that kind of visceral lust for men's bodies that HSTS definitely will. And you'll know this if you meet and end up in bed with an HSTS. You will know the difference. It's, it's absolutely obvious. The other thing is that, and I'm going to discuss this more in the other piece when I talk about the men who like lady boys, is that some men like to be penetrated. Well, I'll tell you something. You're going to have real difficulty getting an HSTS to do that for you. That It's not going to happen. Very few HSTS will even think about doing that. V to be fair, an awful lot of AGPs will show similar reservations. They're not going to want to do it. But more of them will. So if you're a guy looking for a girl partner, which is you know what I look for, I look for conventional straight relationship with my with the transsexual partner then HSTS are the ones you're looking for AGPs will be a less it's, it's my experience is it's not as satisfying a sexual relationship it's not as deep and intimate and there is that risk that she's going to turn around and say well can I penetrate you now and you're going to spend the rest of the bloody night fighting her off which is no fun trust me that's just a dreadful way to spend a night if you're not into it, if you're into it, I'm sure, you know, great, fine, carry on. I don't give a damn what you do in bed. Um, to your body, you do what you like with it. So if you're into, if you're looking to have a girlfriend who wants you to penetrate her, look for an HSTS. If you're the kind of guy who wants to be penetrated, look for an AGP. You look for the, the tall, kind of, mm, somewhat masculine, one, androgynous to be nice ones. Don't look for the little pretty ones because they ain't going to do what you want. Okay, so I'm going to come back and I'll do the uh, piece about the men who like ladyboys because, strangely enough, there's more than one type of them as well. <laughs>